Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. When I use my common sense, it says it's public property. Fire trucks go here, get the water. People can get the water for their farm animals, yeah. whatever. People can swim, people can ice skate. Yes. That was always like this. And we drive by here a few weeks ago and we see this huge fence up. I don't see any reason why if they put a sign up, swim at your own risk or whatever. Yeah. That's the way it used to be. Yeah. And when they came, they had to swim at their own risk. There were no fences or anything around. And even when people were swimming at their own risk, I don't think this was a hot spot for drownings at all, was it? No, we, I never knew of anybody to drown here. There you go. I never ever heard of anybody. Mom, how long have you lived? Like, you live within a mile of this. How long have you lived there? Ever since... Uh, You've lived there since 1947. Wow. Yes, since 47. So, in those years, that's a long time to never have an incident. David Menzies for Rebel News, just north of Stirling, Ontario. In fact, folks, we're back at the Harold Quarry. We were here earlier in the week, and we showed you how, thanks to a council decision, the quarry that had been a beloved place as a swimming hole for almost a century, it has been walled off uh, by fencing and barbed wire. But guess what? Today is yet another swim-in protest and uh, just shows you uh, necessity is the mother of invention, isn't it? Because as you can see, there is a two ladder system that the people here that are part of the protest have uh, used to breach the barbed wire fencing. And I can see uh, several people down in the water having a jolly good time. I've heard rumors that council is actually thinking about making the, barb the barbed wire fencing even higher. Um, I don't think that's a good idea. I think that just means these people will bring uh, larger ladders in order to breach the fencing. But in any event, let's um, wade into uh, the swimming hole and uh, talk to the local residents and see what they have to say about a once beloved, cherished summer tradition being fenced off by a, a fence that cost almost $50,000. Wow, <laughs> your tax dollars hard at work yet again, eh? Can you explain what was behind this decision to put up an almost $50,000 fence to prohibit residents of this area to go swimming, something that's been done for almost a century? I'm, I'm not sure because uh, the council never looked for public input on that. The worst part of it is that they did it without talking to anybody. It just popped up. And we didn't even have a vote when they took us to Sterling. They just said you had to go. Yes. And that was right. Wow. And we didn't have anybody to say anything. If I'd have been younger, I might have. <laughs> I'm too old. It's also the second fence in two years, right? They built a fence and then they replaced this fence. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I think it's ridiculous. Okay. I think that they should rethink the whole thing. I think it should be turned into a spot of beauty where you can take advantage of this natural wonder. And I drive by here almost all the time. And on beautiful days, you see families having picnics and going for swims and stuff like this here. I don't see any problem with fencing it off, but why don't they go and hire some lifeguards or hire a security company to come in and have these gates open for X number of hours on a Saturday or a Sunday? I only have heard that there was a suicide committed, and that's it. No, no injuries, no fatalities, nothing. Yeah. I mean, people are responsible, wow. I would think. There's a lot of farmers who are having to buy water instead of backing their truck down there and taking water at the quarry to go and feed their livestock. You know, that's a good point, too. Because, and, and I understand the fire department uh, and comes the fire here for water. Yeah. yeah, and the fire department is here. Uh, like I say, I live in Springbrook, and there's a volunteer fire department. And the only way they can get water is from here or from somebody else's pond. So why not open it up? I used to swim here all the time. Since okay. the time we moved to Starling in 2002. Great place, lots of fun. Um, it's just silly. I'm now here to support them because this is outrageous what the town did. This is public land that was 
donated from a private owner to the municipality for all the people. Even that the the fact that council said it was insurance is, is hearsay because there's no public uh, record of it. We've uh, we've tried to go through uh, the proper channels and go to council meetings, but we don't actually know if it's the insurance company. That is the the town rumor, wow. but uh, but we don't we're not sure if insurance is the reason. They were told by the insurance company, so we were told. I asked for the. Uh, a uh, letter of instruction from the insurance company, and uh, I, I didn't get a copy, and uh, they say, if, to my knowledge, there isn't one. It was just a verbal thing done behind clo closed doors. So, wow. so the clerk, I assume, told counsel, you got to close the quarry, and they said, uh, okay. If you break down the municipality's uh, insurance costs separately, our library went up uh, by 25%, but I don't think we're going to fence it off. Uh, we cannot attend council meetings anymore, and I just heard from other people, even you attend virtually, you can't hear anything. So I don't see any reason why, if they put a sign up, swim at your own risk or whatever. Yeah. That's the way it used to be. Yeah. And when they came, they had to swim at their own risk. There were no fences or anything around. And even when people were swimming at their own risk, I don't think this was a hot spot for drownings at all, was it? No, we, I never knew of anybody to drown. Here. There you go. I never ever heard of anybody. Uh, Mom, how long have you lived? Like, you live within a mile of this. How long have you lived there? Ever since. Uh, You've lived there since 1947. Wow. Yes, since 47. So, in those years... That's a long time to never have an incident. Well, folks, I'm going to join the swim in protesters now by uh, taking part in an egregious act of rebellion, uh, which is climbing up this ladder and then going down that ladder. Uh, talk about necessity being the mother of invention. When people want to go swimming on a hot summer day, it'll take more than this $50,000 barbed wire fence to prevent them from doing so. You know, it's kind of funny if fencing off this quarry to swimmers was all in the name of safety. When you think of it, forcing people who want to swim, climbing up two ladders, that's probably the unsafest thing about this quarry in the first place. I mean, if someone falls off a ladder, the ladder gives way. I don't think that's going to happen. It's nicely tethered here. But uh, isn't that kind of the opposite of what council is trying to do here? Bizarre. Hi, ma'am. What brings you out to this swim in protest? We were actually just passing by and I was told there was a protest, so we thought we'd lend our support. So you're more of a fan of protests as opposed to swimming, I guess. I used to swim here like 35 years ago every day oh, with my right, family. Eh? Yeah. My name is Gary Kite. I am a Sterling Rodden Township taxpayer. Okay. And I've been coming here for 51 years with my kids, with my grandkids, and myself and my whole family. Why they did this, I have no idea. Talk about not asking the people what they want or what they need. Maybe they should go back through their old systems as well. Their principal for the Sterling schools used to fish in here with his 12 foot aluminum boat. His name was Ed Fleming, well-respected, Springbrook Sterling. I don't know why they did this. Uh, I'm not 100% sure why, I've never really heard anything uh, f on, other than Facebook has said the insurance for the town has went up, yeah. is, is hearsay, but, but we, they, we ne they never officially said anything. And tell me, do you think there's any hope in the near or far future of this council reversing its decision, um, at least opening up the gate so that people don't have to bring ladders so that they can enjoy swimming here again? I don't know if, that was, if it's going to be soon, but first off, why would you do something without consult? Two, why would you put in a, something that you're going to class as a legal thing without a bylaw to begin with? And then three, like I say, what harm is it doing? The most harm is going to come from when somebody falls off that fence, falls off that gate, or if my property burns down because they have to unlock five locks or four locks in order oh, to get That's right, it. that's the fire department, right? That's the fire department, yeah. okay. Who's to say that the guy that's here first knows exactly how to unlock this gate? So, sir, um, if I were to poll the residents in the community, 
Is this a popular decision or, because I'm getting the sense that the vast majority of people hate what's happened here. I think it's a whim. It didn't, it wasn't a decision. It was, oh, let's take it and go ahead. Let's not go. We were never spoke to as a person of the township, of the village. It was just something that came out. My understanding is it was conversation between one or two councillors and maybe the mayor, but I know the mayor knows everything about it, apparently. So therefore, why wasn't it taken through the proper steps? Why was it just done on a whim? Hi, Indy. (laughs) Do you have any hope that these kind of swim in protests will get council to change their minds or will they use the expenditure against that? They saying, well, we already spent $50,000. We can't, you know, tear it down. Uh, How do you think this will play out? I think that if we make a stand enough, they might just leave the gate open. Mm. And then that would, you know, stop the people from falling in around the fence, but then people could still come in and access their water. You know, I think that's a great compromise because if they're worried about people jumping in from the banks, they've, they've fenced that off. But like you said, open the gate. This is a very gentle grade down to the, uh, mm-hmm. down to the water hole. And let people on a beautiful July summer day like this jump in and cool down. Yeah, we're not doing any damage. We're just enjoying nature. Well, folks, as the afternoon continues, uh, more people are coming to this swim in protest. Some people are going into the water. Some are just uh, hanging around uh, on the parking lot, both of which, if you can believe it, are trespassing offenses now. And yet um, during previous women's, when the Ontario Provincial Police came, uh, many of the demonstrators were begging to get a ticket. The police officers would not comply with that request. That suggests to me that this whole bylaw or whatever it is that's fencing off uh, the quarry might be on very shaky ground when you have police saying, uh, no, we're not going to enforce this law. In the meantime, like I said, on our first trip to this waterhole to channel Ronald Reagan circa 1987, uh, Mayor Mullen, tear down this fence. And you know, it might be in your best interest to do so. Next year is an election uh, year here in uh, Sterling Rodden. And maybe if the fence isn't gotten rid of, perhaps people here will get rid of the mayor and council instead. For Rebel News, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Hey folks, you know Rebel News, we haven't cut back our reporting like the mainstream media. We are getting out into the field more so every day, every week, every month, but we need your help. If you can, please go to rebelfieldreports.com. Make a donation so that we can continue to bring you the other side of the story.